Names like Bobby Isaac, Richard Petty, David Pearson, the Allison brothers, Bobby and Donnie, Buddy Baker, Fred Lorenzen, Pete Hamilton, to mention a few, constitute the cream of NASCAR racing. Now, take drivers like these in the fastest late model stocks in the world. Put them on a wide, smooth, two-mile oval, and you suddenly have all the ingredients for a great race. And such was the case at Michigan International Speedway. It was only a short time ago that the Rebels and their hot cars invaded Yankee territory with a brand of excitement all their own, a wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, flat-out type of racing that demanded recognition, and they got it. NASCAR races have set attendance records across the country. We consider it a great privilege to present on today's show the Motor State 400. With every NASCAR race here at Michigan International Speedway, the crowds grow larger, but they'll have to build additional grandstands to top this one. The good old boys from the Southland always put on the kind of a show that lights a fire in the heart of any race fan. And all the veterans are here for the Motor State 400, along with some newcomers. One such virgin to the sport of racing is multimillionaire Chris Vallow, now financially interested in Nichols Engineering. David Pearson is driving the first in a series of Pontiacs to be built by Nichols. Chris Vallow told us about his $7 million master plan for racing. Uh, you're going to have the, one of the biggest racing teams that ever hit any race circuit. We're going to be like uh, performers. We're going to fill the stands. And you get the fans and you get the promoters. They'll put more money back into it for the drivers and other car owners so that they can continue going on with the sport. Now, I think by doing this, that we'll get the factories back into it sooner than they wanted to come back. And then everybody will benefit from it. With the announcement given for all drivers to climb aboard, this one is about to get underway. The Allison brothers own the front row. Bobby had fast time in the Mercury number 12, and Donnie starts on the outside in the Wood Brothers Merc number 21. In the second row, it's Pete Hamilton in a Plymouth, and Bobby Isaacs number 71 Dodge. They're followed by Buddy Baker, Fred Lorenzen, Richard Petty. All the big names in the hottest stock cars in America thunder down the front chute for the green flag, and the battle is on. Bobby Allison unleashes at Mercury and grabs the front spot. Pete Hamilton the second, Donnie Allison third. At the end of the first lap, Bobby Allison is the leader, but the next five cars all want second. third turn, Bobby Isaac moves his charger into the second spot. Pete Hamilton third, Donnie fourth. Isaac's Hemi sounds strong as he moves up on the inside to challenge Allison for the lead. Bill Seifert makes an early pit stop and it looks like trouble. Donnie Allison pulls a beautiful slingshot out of the second turn and fires into the lead down the back chute. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that Bobby Isaac came here to race today as he drives Donnie on the outside. It's a triplet down the front chute with the Allison brothers down low, Bobby Isaac on the high side. This is the wildest kind of racing and the fans love it. On the third lap, the yellow comes out when Charlie Roberts drops a drive shaft in the turn. They clear the track quickly, and the green flag drops again. Down the long back straight, Donnie Allison fires underneath brother Bobby to take the lead. Dodge's favorite boy, Bobby Isaac. He blasts through on the inside of Donnie Allison, and the red number 71 is the new leader. Isaac is holding the lead, but there's a red hot trio right behind him. Pete 
Hamilton and the Allison boys are staging a battle of their own for second place, and Isaac tries to stretch the pack. John Sears pits his 69 Dodge. The crew tell him he blew a head gasket, and they push it behind the wall. Meanwhile, the lead swapping continues. Now it's Donnie Allison, Isaac second, Hamilton third. Down the front shoot, Pete Hamilton in the Plymouth number six passes Isaac to take over second. Later, Isaac closes the gate on Hamilton and heads for Donnie and the lead. Here's Buddy Baker and Richard Petty. They're running fifth and sixth. Bobby Allison brings his Holman Moody Merck in for a quick stop. He's the first of the leaders to pin. Later, the Coca-Cola car goes back on the track. On the next lap, two more dive down in row. It's Donnie Allison and Bobby Isaac. Now, some of the racing is up to the crewmen. Sensational Wood Brothers do it again, and Donnie is the first one out. The track temperatures are high, and tire wear is fast becoming a factor as many of the cars come in for a rubber swap and fuel. Pearson pits his Pontiac. When they get the bugs out of this one, you can bet he'll be a screamer. On the track, Donnie Allison's Purolator Mercury is the car to catch. Bobby Allison is second, Isaac third. Turn two, Allison and Isaac are in a 170 mile an hour wheel to wheel duel. After 140 miles, the Pearson Pontiac limps down pit row with a blown head gasket. The crew push it into the garage area where Chris Fallow was standing by with David. Both men have a strong mutual respect for one another. Well, uh, he don't even seem like a boss. I think he's one of the best in the business. As far as uh, bothering the boys, working on a car, or me telling us what to do, uh, he just never does. Now, we told him, you know, he'd have to sit back if it took two, four, six months. And it's a shame that we have to make him sit like this, but there's nothing else we can do on it. Johnny Allison roars by the grandstand in his 21 Merc, trying to stretch Bobby and Isaac. On the 95th lap, the caution flag comes out when George Allfeet spins and rushes the wall. He wheels the zero car into the pits. And he's not alone, as half the field take this opportunity to refuel and change rubber. The action is fast. We have six cameras in the pits, so take a look at the best auto servicing in the world.
cars are back on the track and holding under the yellow. Suddenly, the green is out. All cars explode down the front chute, and this race is officially restarted. Number 21 on the outside is Donnie Allison. Watch that boy move up. Bobby and Richard Petty to regain the lead. The pack screams through the fourth pocket. You want to keep an eye on that red 71, the Dodge Charger driven by Bobby Isaac. His heavy sounds stronger than it did at the start. straight, Bobby Allison passes Hamilton's Plymouth to take over second. It's the Allison brothers, one and two. Donnie has the lead, but Bobby is trying to climb in his trunk. and takes the lead. Isaac is running third and coming on. On the next lap, the tree was still locked up tight, but Donnie slips down low to pass Bobby, and the Wood Brothers' Mercury once again owns the lead. Allison whips the home hootie car into the low groove and streaks into the pits, broad sliding into his stall. This is the 149th lap, and his tires are pretty thin. He's in for 24 seconds, and they turn him loose. Bobby Isaac gets fuel and right side rubber for a Hawkin Dodge Charger. Donnie Allison is in with the hood up. He may have a large size problem. on the track, Bobby Allison has the number one spot with Isaac right on his back. Pete Hamilton pushes his roadrunner into the third position. Donnie Allison is running fourth with Richard Petty fifth. At the end of 170 laps, the average speed has gone up to 148.418 miles per hour. Petty is in for what he hopes will be his last pit stop of the day. Into the first turn, Allison and Bobby Isaac are locked up and fighting for the lead. Bobby Isaac is not to be denied. He has the lead and tries to run away. Down the long back chute, Allison unleashes that big Mercury, passes Isaac, and goes back in the lead. Bobby Isaac says, no way, drops down low and punches past Allison through the fourth turn. A hundred sixty, one sixty-five, a hundred seventy miles per hour, and Allison does it again. He passes Isaac on the straight. This is racing rebel style, and the fans come unglued.
Dallas and Isaac Mercury Dodge. Watch them thread their way through this traffic down the front street. moments. Allison has the lead with Bobby Isaac working him over on every foot of the racetrack. There's the white flag. One more lap. Can Isaac do it? Allison has the power down the chutes, but Isaac is handling better in the corners. Both cars are strong and flat out. Out of the fourth turn, and here's the drag for the flag as both drivers stand on it. But Allison's Mercury proves to be too much for the Dodge, and he grabs the checkered flag one second ahead of Bobby Isaac. The photographers in Victory Lane greeted a completely exhausted but very happy Bobby Allison. The Motor State 400 represented his third win in three consecutive weeks. He set a brand new track record, and he stated that he had to in view of the competition. He felt that Bobby Isaac was one of the fiercest and most sportsmanlike competitors ever to climb into a race car. On the clock, his ride only lasted two hours, 41 minutes. But to Bobby Allison, it was a whole lifetime jammed into a Sunday afternoon. Bobby Allison unleashes at Mercury and grabs the front spot. Pete Hamilton the second, Donnie Allison third. At the end of the first lap, Bobby Allison is the leader, but the next five cars all want second. third turn, Bobby Isaac moves his charger into the second spot. Racing that demanded recognition, and they got it. NASCAR races have set attendance records across the country. We consider it a great privilege to present on today's show, the Motor State 400. With every NASCAR race here at Michigan International Speedway, the crowds grow larger but they'll have to build additional grandstands to top this one. The good old boys from the Southland always put on the kind of a show that lights a fire in the heart of any race fan. And all the veterans are here for the Motor State 400, along with some newcomers. One such virgin to the sport of racing is multimillionaire Chris Vallow, now financially interested in Nichols Engineering. David Pearson is driving the first in a series of Pontiacs to be built by Nichols. Chris Vallow told us about his $7 million master plan for racing. Uh, we're going to have the, one of the biggest racing teams that ever hit any race circuit. We're going to be like uh, performers. We're going to fill the stands. When you get the fans and you get the promoters, they'll put more money back into it for the drivers and other car owners so that they can continue going on with the sport. Now, I think by doing this, that we'll get the factories back into it sooner than they wanted to come back. And then everybody will benefit from it. the announcement given for all drivers to climb aboard, this one is about to get underway. The Allison brothers own the front row. Bobby had fast time in the Mercury number 12, and Donnie starts on the outside in the Wood Brothers Merc number 21. In the second row, it's Pete Hamilton in a Plymouth, and Bobby Isaac's number 71 Dodge. They're followed by Buddy Baker, Fred Lorenzen, Richard Petty. All the big names in the hottest stock cars in America thunder down the front chute for the green flag, and the battle is on. Names like Bobby Isaac, Richard Petty, David Pearson, the Allison brothers, Bobby and Donnie, Buddy Baker, Fred Lorenzen, Pete Hamilton, to mention a few, constitute the cream of NASCAR racing. Now, take drivers like these in the fastest late model stocks in the world. Put them on a wide, smooth, two-mile oval, and you suddenly have all the ingredients for a great race. And such was the case at Michigan International Speedway. It was only a short time ago that the Rebels and their hot cars invaded Yankee territory with a brand of excitement all their own, a wheel-to-wheel, flat-out type of race.